Good morning. I'm Kevin Dorma. In the last video, I left us with, uh, with a question, and that is, why do we see frost on the surface of things, like on the top of the barbecue, but we don't see frost underneath things, underneath the barbecue? So, I thought I'd give you my thoughts today on this nice, on this beautiful morning. The sun's coming out. I can start to feel the, the warmth from the sun. Should be a really good day. But we're not here to talk about heat from the sun. We're here to talk about frost. So what reasons could we have for why we see frost on things but not under things? And one of the ideas out there is that it's the heat from the earth that tends to keep things warm. So if it's under an object, the heat from the earth is trapped and that keeps the surface warm and that's why we don't get frost. Well, if that's the case, then why do we get frost out in the open on the grass, surface of the earth, but if we go underneath our spruce tree over there, or our little tree over here, uh, we don't get frost. Is the tree producing enough heat that it's keeping the ground warm? Mm, seems like a bit of a stretch. So, it's a nice argument, but it's got some holes. So let's take a look at this, and we're going to start with a couple of, we're going to start with a really simple, very well-known observation. And that observation is precisely what I'm doing right now, and that's sitting in the glorious warmth of the sun. And when it's cold outside, we like to go out in the, in the sunshine and warm up. And the reason why we warm up is because the sun is producing lots of radiation, and the stuff that we interpret as heat is infrared radiation. So we go out in the glorious sunshine, and it's the radiation from the sun that warms us up. And if we're in the shadows, if we're shaded from the sun, we don't get that warmth, and we get and we don't get the warmth. That's simple. Okay. So a hot object, like the surface of the sun, or a toaster element, produces radiation, and we feel it. We interpret it as heat. And now the amount of radiation depends on the temperature. So something hot like the sun or a toaster element produces lots of radiation. But hang on, everything has a temperature. You know, body temperature is 37 and some odd degrees. Does that mean that I'm producing radiation? And the answer to that is yes. Everything produces radiation. A person's body produces radiation. My hand is emitting thermal radiation to the camera. That's precisely how thermal imaging works for a camera. It detects changes in temperature, which is changes in radiation. So, in the warm sun, I can hold my hand out, and it can absorb the glorious warmth from the sun, and my the radiation from the sun comes down and warms up my hand but my hand also produces radiation and sends it back to the sun. It's just that the sun can't feel it because my hand is so small and the sun is so far away. So the balance between this, this energy balance, between the radiation from the sun coming down onto my hand and the tiny bit of radiation from my hand going back out, well, the sun wins, and that warms up my hand, and it warms it up more than the environment, more than we would expect. And that's why we sit outside to warm up in the sun. But let's flip that around, and let's suppose I'm not out outside in the glorious sunshine, but it's evening, it's nighttime, and I'm outside on a starless, on a beautiful clear night, and my hand is emitting radiation to this night sky, but the vast emptiness of space is not providing any radiation at all to my hand. What happens? Well, my hand is losing radiation out to the sky out there, and the sky isn't giving anything back. So what happens is my hand is actually cooling off, and it's cooling off more than we would expect. This says that my hand will cool off and become colder than the surrounding air. So what's happening is we can look at it this way. We could say that the cold night sky 
is literally sucking the heat out of surfaces, and that's what makes them cold. It's not the heat from the ground that is somehow trapped, but it's the radiation that is lost to the cold night sky that causes the temp a surface temperature to be lower than we would expect. So how can we stop this, how can we stop frost from happening? Well, if we can't see the night sky, then we're not going to get frost. So that means if it's cloudy, we don't see the vast emptiness of space. And we don't see frost on cloudy days. If we're covered, if we have a canopy of trees over us, we're not going to see frost on the surface. Now, now we can test this theory, because right now it's just a theory. Then we can test it. So how are we going to test it? So we need two thermometers. Now this is a, a really nice one that I borrowed from a lab many years ago. Uh, you don't need one quite this fancy. This is a lab thermometer, a really old one. Um, but get two good accurate thermometers. Place one on a surface right over there. Place the other one on a similar surface, maybe right there. But, cover it with an umbrella. Don't trap the heat in like this. All you want to do is have it covered just enough so that we have no view of the night sky. So, two thermometers and one umbrella. And let it sit outside on a beautiful clear night when, there, when frost is forming a, observe where the frost is, and B, early in the morning, in the wee hours, like 6 o'clock, when the sun is just barely coming up, check the temperature. And see for yourself if there's a temperature difference caused by having a view of the night sky. Take care. Bye-bye.